Continuing on with my interfacing adventures here, I gave up on the idea of using another pick as the interface and I decided to use my uh, Raspberry Pi Pico that I got lying around. So I figured out, finally got the build tools all set up and uh, got this program running and it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Like you can do C++ 20 on this little thing. It costs like $4. It's got like the same I.O. pins as uh, PIC. Uh, probably less power consumption, way more memory, way more megahertz, two cores. It's crazy. It's cool. I love it. I should, in all rights, I should be doing this project. The main, the main microcontroller unit should be one of these bad boys. But, you know, I decided to use the picks because I got them lying around anyways. So, might as well use them up. But I'll use this guy. And it'll interface uh, USB to my computer and we'll use an I2C uh, interface to hook up to the PIC. And that's how we'll be able to get information out of the PIC for, uh, for R&D purposes and for diagnostics. So yeah, now I got, this, I got this wired up so I can hook this up. And I'm going to need some level shifting because, you know, th th this thing also runs at 3.3 like the uh well like like this guy here so we need to level shift from 3.3 to 5 and uh that's not too hard because i2c only has two two pins for communication so we only got a level shift too can do that easily with the the mosfet i got lying around so it'll be all good i'll wire that up then i'll do some programming and i'll i'll come back when i've got some kind of results to show i guess Quick update here, we are successfully powering our Pico from the same power supply that powers our uh, PIC. And everything's looking good. It's running the program. It's blinking like a mofo. Uh, now, next thing... Oh yeah, one more thing. I am running a uh, voltage probe on 3.3 supply rail of this Pico. We can see it isn't... Yeah, it's putting out 3.3. So that's what we're going to use as the supply, the 3.3 volt supply in our level shifter. Uh, so yeah, now I got a few things I got to do. I got to figure out how to program the push button so that we can read from it on this Pico. I got to set up the level shifting. And uh, once I've got those things done, then I got the big task of getting I2C working between these two devices. I've got two things that can go wrong, and I've got to get them both to go right simultaneously. So that's going to be fun. But yeah, first things first, and eh, probably level shifter. One more quick thing: I wanted to make sure that the USB connection and everything worked correctly when I'm all, when I'm also powering from this five volt supply. So I hooked up the USB, and you can see here I've got the COM port working, and we are reading the output from the Pico. So everything's good see you later all right we got our boys all hooked up you can see the uh pico is running if i hit this thing you you can see the the pick is running so i've got my level shifter set up here uh, i've got the meter hooked up to the high side right now it's outputting five volts uh, the low side is currently disconnected if i connect the low side to zero the high side goes to, yeah, zero. If I take, connect the low side to three, the high side goes to five. So far, so good. Let's try for the other side. So now you see my probe is on the low side. That's the left side. And the input on the high side uh, is currently disconnected. And the low, the low side is currently outputting three volts. So we know that, that when we're disconnected, we're in a high impedance state. The output on the other side is going to be Three volts. Well, the voltage on both sides are going to be three and uh, five, respectively. So let's drive the high side to ground, pull it down, low side goes to ground. Great. Drive the high side to five, the low side goes to 3.3. So everything is working great. This circuit seems like it will do the job adequately. I need another one because there are two. There's the clock pin. And there's the data pin for uh, for I2C. So I'll make one more of these. Then I'll hook um, I'll hook these two bad boys up onto the left hand side, 
and I'll figure out what I got to hook on the right hand side. I got to look up what pins on this bad boy are used for I2C. And once we have those physical connections set up, then then comes the fun part. I've got to get it working on both of these simultaneously. And if it doesn't work, I will not have a good idea of which one is the problem. So that's always fun. We'll see you later. Yeah, it's your boy Chili here with some uh, funky fresh progress for you. So I uh, completed the level shifting circuit here. I've moved our Pico a little closer and I've got the connections here. You can see here's my finger and that is the uh, connections for I2C on the pick. Those are the pins that go into the level shifter here. Everything is copacetic on the hardware side. And how I know that is because I've actually uh, managed to get the communication to work. So uh, let's take a quick peek at the code here. Um, this is the code for the Pico. I basically yeah, just pulled this out of one of the examples. It's pretty straightforward to get this working. Setting the baud rate at uh, 10k. Nice, uh, nice low speed. Oh, by the way, speaking of baud rate, I changed the uh, resistors on the level shifter from 10k to 4.7k because that'll allow for some faster speeds might not even be necessary but it doesn't hurt either but anyways back to this so we uh, yeah we set up the uh, uh, GPIO settings to allow for I to C and it's very straightforward then uh, when you actually want to do the I to C well what this code here does is very simple. It just it actually scans all of the I2C addresses to see what's on what's on the bus really. Uh, and there's not too many addresses to scan, so it happens pretty quickly. And yeah, it just tries to read a single byte from every uh, possible address in seven bit addressing mode. And anything that gives a response back, it just uh, it'll you'll see you'll see it display something. You can see it already on the left hand side here. What hap what's happening? But, uh, yeah, so not much there. Now, on the pick side, it was a lot a lot more complicated for a lot of reasons. The newer tools that Microchip gives for pick, like, they give you some cool tools that uh, automatically generate code for the hardware peripherals. Unfortunately, those tools don't support the uh, the, the pieces that I have. So... I have to go into the data sheet and I gotta basically bang around with the registers manually and it, it sucks. But uh, it works, I got it to work. So these are the bits we set. We wanna put the uh, the pick into slave mode. Pico is master mode, pick is slave. And uh, then you've got to create an interrupt service routine because what happens is when the master does something and specifies the address of our pick. Uh, the peripheral will check that address, say, oh, someone's talking to us, and then it'll fire off an interrupt, and then you've got to, in that interrupt, you've got to handle what's going on, you got to clear bits, set bits, whatever. That's what we're doing here. And uh, I sort of just got this code, like, off the internet, and was like, eh, this looks kind of <laughs> close to what, I probably want and then I just kind of messed around with it and it worked so I'm not like you know 100% uh, clear on every little aspect of this but this is basically checking whether this is a read operation or a write operation so it's a little confusing because it does that mean are we reading the slave is it reading or is the master trying to read from the slave <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. I guess it just it works. This works. So when this is when this is true, that means that the master is trying to read something from us. And if this is true, this means that the read has finished. Uh, it, the master has read all the bytes that it wants to read. Otherwise, it is reading bytes. And uh, so we just put a byte onto this uh, into this register, and that is what is going to get serially fired off onto the i2c bus so yeah that works and i in the configuration here i set our address to of course 69 you gotta shift it left by once for reasons and so 
What this means is that on our bus here, when we scan the bus, we should see uh, something on address 69. So I'm going to plug in the power supply for the pick. Right now, I think the Pico is it's being powered by USB. One second. All right, so I plugged in the power supply here. Now the Pico is being powered both by um, by this five volt supply here and also by the USB. I don't know who wins in that battle, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but if I hit the switch, we can see that our microcontroller, our PIC is working. Uh, and then if I press enter to begin the scan, you will see at the address 69, as expected, we have a hit. There is a response from a device. Uh, the value is 42, although that doesn't matter. It doesn't uh, display that. It just says, yeah, we got a response. So there's something there. Uh, now, if I quickly uh, unplug the power supply for the pick here, and we wait for the capacitor to drain, the pick is now dead. And if we scan again, we see, ah, now we don't have a hit on uh, any address. There's nothing, no slaves on the I2C bus. So there you go. Um, so I have the, that's the bare bones. I got communication working. I can verify that my circuitry is wired up correctly. And I have a good starting point. I figured out how to put interrupt uh, service routines in this compiler. And yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. So now I'm going to implement a little bit of a protocol so that I can communicate between the Pico and the uh, and the PIC. The, the, those two words are too similar. Like you just add an O to the end of one of them and you get the other one. And that's going to... It confuses me when I'm talking. Anyways, so I'll do a little protocol communicate from the Pico to the PIC and uh, I can communicate from the Pico to the computer using serial communication, basically uh, using STIDIO. So I will be able to uh, yeah, get information out of the PIC onto my computer and that will enable me to do science. We will do science um, concerning timing and flow. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably come back when I've got the protocol figured out and I got an interesting test there. So in the PIC code here, uh, when we are, when the master is reading, we are just going to output the toggle state value. And when the master is writing, we're going to take the value that the master wrote in interpret that as a command and do something depending on which command it is. So the values for that command I just put up in here in this uh, enumeration. Also I had a bug. This uh, I, had, I had a not in here. It was not supposed to be not. It was just uh, R not W directly determines whether or not the master is uh, reading or not. So there we go. Here on the Pico side of things, uh, we're just going to take in a line and depending on what the, the user types in, we have some functionalities that correspond to the stuff in the PIC code, obviously. So we're either going to write I2C or here we're going to read I2C. And yeah, so if I, let me just show you here. Currently, the, uh, the LED is on, and if I go read, it says the state is 1. If I clear, let me hit, let me hit enter, yeah, obviously. If I toggle, change it on, if I toggle again, off, and if I read, Oh yeah, if I were to push this and then read, yeah, 
So nice. If I were to unplug this, wait for it to power down, and then try to read, something hop on. So it got a uh, error was returned from the function because it wasn't able to communicate. If I were to type something in that's not a command, and it just says, what is, what, what is that? Okay. So there you go. I will. I have two directional communication working between these two guys here, and uh, everything's great. So next, I guess I will have to start uh, doing my testing for flow, flow control, speed of how fast the thing fills up, so I can time how long I gotta keep. The, uh, the solenoid open and stuff like that. So, see you then.